and for the WBC welterweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, trimmed with white, and weighing 146 and one quarter pounds. From Central Islip, New York, he brings an excellent record of 28 victories. With three defeats, two draws, eight KOs to his credit, Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger and former junior welterweight champion of the world, Jake the Snake Rodriguez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the lavender trim with black and weighing 147 pounds. In 1984, he captured Olympic gold and went on to develop a professional record of 36 victories with only one defeat and one draw, 15 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, considered by many to be pound for pound the best in the world today from Norfolk, this is Virginia, you, this is you, this presenting the WBC welterweight champion of the world, four-time world champion, Pernell Sweet Pea. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions by the New Jersey Control Board. Both these touch gloves. One of my spies tells me, Jim, that because these two fighters have sparred so many rounds, we just might see Pernell Whitaker turn orthodox fighter on a few occasions in this fight. Let's see if he tries it. <laughs> stay in your corner, Jake. He's never done it before. Meaning Only that he'll in stand in a now. conventional stance and use the left to jab. He believes that the best possible weapon against Jake Rodriguez is the straight right hand. And if he stands in a conventional stance, he can throw it more readily than from his normal left-handed stance. Rodriguez, a sturdy southpaw in good shape starts out trying to go to Whitaker's body virtually everybody Purnell has fought over the past few years has said I'm gonna wear him out to the body so far it's been done only in short stretches I let him go let him out first thing I noticed Jim is that Rodriguez is trying to go to Whitaker with that right hook because uh, Gary Jacobs did have some success with that punch. Boy, this is no Felix Trinidad fight. No, this is no Felix Trinidad fight. There's nobody in there with dynamite in his gloves this time. Could become a chess match between two guys who know each other pretty well. I remember Sonny Liston getting ready to fight Lee Otis Martin from uh, Philadelphia. Right. And his wife saying, oh, Sonny's been sparring with this guy for years. He used to whip him in training camp. Let me tell you, it didn't work out like that in a boxing match. You got to forget all about ever sparring with a guy when you fight him in the ring. You ever fought one of your sparring partners, George? I did. And it was altogether different. Hard right hand by Whitaker. Rodriguez has slowed down after having come out firing. And this gives Whitaker a chance to begin his offensive pattern. Jab, jab, jab. And now Jake Rodriguez, who said he had to jab with the jabber to have a chance here. He'll begin to try to match his right hand stiletto against that of Pernell Whitaker. hand over the top made contact for Whitaker good short right hand inside by Whitaker Purnell of course an acknowledged master of counter punching Rodriguez says that's a problem I don't quite know how to deal with I'm gonna have to go at him so if he counters he counters This is one Larry Merchant's got to figure. You 
you leaving it to Larry? No doubt about it. Bell! Oh, I think you'll come up with something, George. Sit down, baby. Come up. Get Box Beautiful. Box Beautiful. That was a beautiful bell. Beautiful. No, that's, that's the way to go, but again, no, no. He's leaning over. He's going to left hand. But he's open for the hook because he's dropping, he's dropping his uh he's dropping his right hand. Okay. okay? So all you gotta do, as soon as he hooks. Come back with your double hook because it's perfect to it, all right? Okay. Now look, every time you throw the left hand, just shoot the left hook. Look, that was a very simple round. You know, you're a boxer, so you have to be the boxer, okay? You're so looking beautiful, you're looking beautiful. Stay right there. Walk away. Or we'll walk to the side. But don't just stay in the front of him. And double and triple jab. You're strong. One jab. Come on. Three, two, three. Get rid of that. Now get out there and double that jab up. Come on. Grab that. Come on. 49 jabs in round one for Whitaker by punch stat numbers. Lands at 23 of them. That's a good start for Purnell tactically. Come on, get him out. Get him out. Let him out. Let him go. Let him go. That man never had to worry about Robin taking over. Jake the Snake has got to just give up that old Robin position and go to be Batman tonight. You want him to open up and be a little bit more aggressive than he's been right. so far? He just can't be sucking all the time. Go up and be number one. It's there for you. You're bigger, taller. Why not fight? Rodriguez, tough customer who can take a punch. Loves to brag that he has fought against nine unbeaten opponents in his career. And indeed, that's the case. And one of them was Felix Trinidad, and he took Trinidad the distance. One of only four fighters that have ever gone the distance with Trinidad. So this is a guy who's a good professional fighter, knows what he's doing in the ring. And you think about what we just saw, that's got to be more than impressive to go that mile around. You think oh, Whitaker's at all affected by Trinidad's performance? Might have in the back of his mind trying to shine just as brightly as the younger man did? Whitaker is so smart. And he's pretty much able to shut out anything once he, once he gets into that ring. This guy is extremely smart. Like a fox. Yeah, if there's one thing he's proven, it is that he doesn't mind a little disapproval from the audience. He goes ahead and fights his fight gets the W, and if you don't like it, well, tune in next time. What happened in 1991? Pernell Whitaker turned into a hard puncher. He started lifting weights, going to the body, landing hard shots. Sometimes you forget about combination. That's what he's kind of gotten into now, a hard hitter. He's backing the other guy up now. There was a time when he would have had to back up and land quicker, harder shots. But people talk about your relaxation level in the ring, how you're able to stay so focused and relaxed in there. In the lower weight classes, this to me is the king of that, George. He is supremely relaxed in there all the time. Supremely is exactly what he is. Maybe too relaxed because people not, they no longer want to see him win. They want to see a great performer. One thing about relaxation, you cannot perform too well as a boxer. You can only get knockouts. Whitaker trying for hard body shots here. So I far, he's been able to outthrow Rodriguez by a pretty significant margin. Jake the Snake just <laughs> not getting off much as Purnell starts and finishes these exchanges. Rodriguez trying for a hard uh, left over the top. It was just good. short, and Purnell pats him on the butt as if to say, yeah, you're working in here. Give me a few more good rounds like this. Okay. It's a little better, but listen to me. Keep your hands up. Don't go straight back, all right? And keep double jabbing. And you, what you're doing is you're standing in front of him too long. Bing, 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 and then move to the side one way or the other. And don't drop your hand. Every time he throws the jab, you're dropping your hand. Don't do that. Okay. Good round. Then go over the left, throw it up with okay? Well, now, as soon as, soon as you get, I don't want you on the outside. When you throw the left hand on the outside, don't come back with the hook. Because I, I don't think you feel too comfortable. Okay? All right. All right. As soon as you get close, then go with the double hook. All right? Just one hook at a time. One hook at a time. Let's go with the one, but start at the bottom, all right? Got to start hitting this guy in the body. You can't miss him with the body. Start back in the body, okay? 
Beautiful work, baby. Beautiful work. They told Rodriguez that was a good round. I'd hate to see a bad one. Now Whitaker, by punch that computation, landed 22 out of 26 jabs in round two. 84% connect rate. Rodriguez coming out, trying to be much more aggressive in round three. He's thrown virtually all the punches, and now Purnell lands a right-left combination and starts peppering the jab again. Big effort by Rodriguez in the first minute of round three. Punches Purnell lands. Get him loose. One of the amazing things about Whitaker really is that probably never in his career, at any weight level, has he been in with a in the ring with a fighter who wasn't at least as strong and probably stronger than him. So he's put together his record against guys always stronger than himself. Let him go, P. Let him go, P. What made him a, a great boxer? He's up to, he's had to overcome so many obstacles. Once you do away with those obstacles, you do away with a lot of the skills you all, all ordinarily needed. Well, when he was a 12-year-old amateur, he used to fight against servicemen in the Navy Yard at Norfolk who were six and seven years older and outweighed him by 40 or 50 pounds. So he came up learning against the hardest kind of opposition. Yeah, it was swim or drown. 215 amateur fights for Purnell Whitaker. And everybody talks about the Olympic gold medal, but he won the Pan Am gold. He won the world championship. He hit every target you could put in front of him as an amateur and came to the professional ranks expecting to be a champion from the beginning. This guy's never thought he had anything to learn. How do you throw out of the window, Jake the Snake? I appreciate everything you've done for me, Duva. I've appreciated Purnell, but I'm going to take your position. He's having a rough time throwing I it out of the window. So he's treating Purnell with too much respect. And that's it? right. Too thankful, and they gave me a chance. What do I do? He's taken two hard left hands in this round. Rare chances for Purnell Whitaker to exploit his own punching power, if in fact there is any. It hardly matters in most of Whitaker's performances, but he'd love to make it matter right, here tonight. Both your step back. Both your step back. Bill! Ah! Okay, Jake. Oh, no. Well, Larry, a lot of people want to see a confrontation, which will never take place in the ring, of course, between Pernell Whitaker and Roy Jones Jr., but they are going to do it on a basketball court. And as recently as Tuesday, Pernell was working out. Working out with Will B. Free, the former Philadelphia 76er. And there you can see, he can shoot that basketball like he can shoot his jab. <laughs> he promises he's going to rain on Jones for 50 when their two teams are matched in a charity basketball game on December 9 in Pensacola, Florida. Let's see that left hand. In the unusual position of the aggressor, a straight left hand. Haven't seen that uh, orthodox stance yet, have we? Nope. Maybe he's holding it in reserve and doesn't think he needs it yet. Yeah, I think it's been too easy this way so far. Whitaker in round three again, 28 out of 38 jabs, 74%. Jake the Snake needs someone like Lou Dubin in his corner, talking about him, urging him on. Yeah, Lou's a good cheerleader, isn't he? Boy, that Lou Dubin is top. Both of you, step out. Top. Cream of the crop. You mentioned earlier, Jim, about Camille Whitaker on. fighting sailors in his hometown of... Uh, 
in Virginia. Norfolk naval base there. One of the real oddities I, I find is that the two top pound-for-pound -pound fighters both come from naval towns. And the Navy has always had great boxing programs, and both of these guys were involved as youngsters in kid programs that the Navy put on. They have a lot in common with their Olympic gold medals and other amateur pedigrees. Whoops. Whoops. Jones didn't win an Olympic <laughs> gold medal. He only I should have. Come on, come on. Get them hands loose. Get them hands loose. Come on. Jones, of course, victimized and sold by the worst Olympic boxing decision in recent years. Rodriguez still cautious in this round. Round four, much like its predecessor, Whitaker has landed one hard overhand left. Uh, Jake, someone needs to say to Jake, Jake, get upset. You've been hit with the hardest shot in the world. This man is not your friend. He's trying to knock you out here tonight. And Jake is going about this at such a slow pace that he's giving Whitaker every opportunity to make it target practice. That's true. No brawling. No holding, on, no hitting ball behind ball. the head, no fouling. There's some good stuff inside for Rodriguez. And Whitaker with a straight right hand says, get out of here. On the other hand, how do you outbox the best boxer in the world? Rennell there, as always, with his eyes open inside, countering at every opportunity. Double jab, straight left hand over the top, all connected. Rodriguez lunging forward in increasing frustration after four. Okay, the only thing you're doing is what we want in the gym that you're not doing. Harold Dottie got it scored through four rounds. Jim, 40 to 36. Four rounds to nothing, Pernell Whitaker. Jim, I don't see why he has to go orthodox. He's the most ambidextrous guy I've ever seen in my life. No matter which way he stands, he's going to kill you with both hands, and that's the, and that's the way this fight is going. He's just backing up Jake Rodriguez with that right jab, straight left. I mean, Jake is fading into the ropes. Pernell's bu building up a big lead. Just coming back with the ropes. I don't need the ropes right now, okay? Just keep coming back with the left hand. As soon as you go with the counter left hand, make sure you're close enough, all right? Don't fall in right. with this guy. All right, but the jab is busting him up. Just keep him up. Just keep him up. 30-year-old Jake the Snake Rodriguez, former junior welterweight title holder, fighting at welterweight here against Rennell Whitaker, a man with whom he says he's had more than 100 rounds in the gym. Sweet Pea says, I'm not sure it was really that many. But then again, I don't keep count. Maybe it only seemed like 100 rounds for Rodriguez. Rodriguez will look in and think of throwing, and Whitaker just pops him. One, two. You make a mistake, and Pernell Whitaker punish you. Doesn't try to knock you out, he just punish you so that you will not do this again. It's almost as though the fact that they know each other so well has played much more into Whitaker's hands than Jake's, George. He seems to know what Jake is going to do before he does it, and he counters before Jake can even throw. He's definitely taking advantage of this being familiar with him. He's taking advantage of it. Jake the Snake is not trying to explore his knowledge of Whitaker. Just not being aggressive enough to do that. You're going to take this guy's title. You got to knock him out. Make him get off the canvas. And no doubt, knowledgeable on, boxing fans yourself. in get the crowd yourself. as they watch this find their minds wandering too well. What would happen if it were Trinidad in there against Pernell Whitaker? What will that fight look like if, in fact, it takes place? Boy, a wonderful match. But then you bring out the best of Turner Whitaker. <laughs> That's the classic boxer-puncher matchup, huh? Telling you. I do not believe we've seen the best of that Felix Trinidad. 
Let him go for now. Let him go for now. There's more to that storybook. Come Match on, up come at on 147 out of there. Come on out of there. Would, would have a faint glimmer of the Leonard Hearns about it. Whitaker, a boxer like Ray Leonard. And Trinidad, a tall punter like Tommy Hearns. But like Hearns, Trinidad can box. Although maybe Purnell isn't as hard a punter as Ray Leonard was. That Ray Leonard was everything you want in a boxer more. As he showed in the first turn fight. All right, break, break. Stop punching. Round five here, much like its predecessors, Purnell Whitaker patiently waiting for Jake Rodriguez to commit or make mistakes and then penalizing him for them with counter punches. Brunel not quite as active with the jab in this round as he is content to bide his time and wait for opportunities to pile up the points against Rodriguez. And the bell, and the bell. And as he walks back to the corner, Purnell turns and grins openly at George Foreman and looks at Roy Jones and then looks to the rafters as if to say, this hall isn't big enough for me. Just keep boxing this guy. It's just a matter of time you just weigh him down. You understand? Now when you get an inside, as soon as you get close, let the hands go up high so you can have something, so you can punch. All right? Because he's grabbing. As soon as you get an inside, he's trying to grab you. Okay? But keep a good jab, but just keep boxing like that. If you hit him with these shots like that, he can't take this all night long like that. Okay. Okay? You can fan him and you can go with double jabs with this guy too, you know? You're boxing beautiful out there. And go with the feints, stuff. Stay with the feints, all right? Look, it's just a matter of time. Slowing him down. Jake, throw your jab and throw that straight left hand that you like to throw to the body. Throw that straight left hand right in his liver. But don't just stay there after you do it now. Right goes out. Trainer manager Dave Burke has been with Rodriguez from the beginning of his decade-long professional career. See if Rodriguez can try to release the straight left hand to the body that Burke is talking about. Both fighters trying to reestablish the jab in the first minute of round six. Rodriguez getting underneath to Whitaker's body. But strictly one shot at a time. That flurry blocked by Purnell's gloves inside. Purnell with a judicious one-two and then stepping back to await other opportunities. Hard left hand to the side of Rodriguez's head. Again, Whitaker blocking most of those with his arms inside. Counter right hand inside for Whitaker. Goes to the body twice with his left hand. Brunel doing a lot of damage in this round. I've noticed something in the last two rounds that suggests something to me, George. Every time, or on, on several occasions. That was the result of an accumulation of body Four. blows. He hit him with about Five. six hard shots six. to the ribcage in a row. Seven. Eight. Exactly what Come happened. Here. Come here, Jake. All right, man. Okay, give me Jake a Jake looked like he was looking for an exit. He crosses himself as he goes into battle. And Purnell decides to come upstairs for a moment. I think he should go back to the body. That's where he did the damage. Pur Purnell Whitaker, like I said earlier, this guy, a knockout is the last thing he wants. He seemed to thrive on just throwing lots of punches and punishing a guy. But round six has been a clinic in body work. Another body punch knocked down. Three, four, five. You think Rodriguez wants six, any more? I'm not so sure. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's all over. He timed it to get up 
just in time for the fight to end. You know, Jim, I was about to say, just as that knockdown occurred, that on three or four occasions in the previous two rounds, when Whitaker did something wonderful, that Rodriguez gave him a nod. It was the kind of a nod a sparring partner does, George, in the, in the gym, saying, good work. You knew it was going to end as that happened. <laughs> and uh, Whitaker was pretty merciful. If you're gonna knock a guy out, listen, I'm gonna knock him out in the body. He's been my sparring partner. That's what you do sometimes to your sparring partner. You want to drop him, go to the body. Well, it was it was local knowledge all the way. He knew what he could do against this guy. He was utterly patient in establishing his opportunities and took maximum advantage once the guy came in close. Here we go. First knockdown, and look at the body punches. Hard left hand there. And then around to the rib cage. Yeah, that left hand up top meant something, too. Not as much as those tremendous body shots. Here we go again. Left hook to the right left hook to the body. Over top, just enough leverage to come back to the body. Back into the body, digging hard. And there had been a hard rain of body punches for 30 seconds before this, and then that last one to the rib cage as Rodriguez went down. And sometimes, like I said, when you spar many rounds with a guy, he's treated you right, you want to knock him out, but at the same time, you do it with the body punch. And that's extreme confidence. Oof, that hurt. And that was as defining a statement as Purnell Whitaker has been able to make in several fights. We told you, it's been five years since he knocked out a quality opponent in a championship fight. And he seemed determined as round six began to at least have a shot at it tonight. Since 1981, he's tried to establish to the world that I'm not only a good boxer, but I can punch. He's made me a believer. I know you believe, George. Now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the officials on this particular knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Atlantic City's Convention Hall by way of Bally's Park Place, the official time, two minutes, 45 seconds of round number six. Referee Frank Cappuccino reaches the 10 count. The winner by knockout victory and still WBC welterweight champion of the world, Purnell. Sweet Pea Whitaker. And we'll take a look at final punch stat numbers, which will demonstrate Purnell Whitaker's numerical domination of Jake the Snake Rodriguez. He landed 140 more punches, throwing only four more. Look at the connect percentage, 61%. This was more than just the usual Purnell Whitaker paint job. This time, the paint had lead in it. And let's go up to Larry Merchant in the ring. Purnell, congratulations once again. Knocking an opponent down twice with body shots is not usually your style. Uh, what happened? Well, you know, I was more or less thinking about the family. Everybody at 4752 Burywood Road. I like this. This was for them, for my little boy, Devon, Tep Devon, Devon Otez, and the rest of my boys. I love you guys, and this was for you. What did you know about him from all of your sparring rounds that you were able to exploit? Had you known before that he was vulnerable in the body? No, I, no, I didn't know, Larry. Like I said, you know, that's form. That's, that's boxing with 14-ounce gloves on. You know, and uh, Jake, take nothing away from him, is an excellent fighter. You know, but tonight, you know, the best is at his best. Tell us what your thoughts were about watching Felix Trinidad tonight. Well, you know, uh, like I said, you know, I don't watch fighters fight, you know. I'm sure my wife, Vaughn, seen the fight, seen him fight. I'm sure when I get home, she can give me some hurt. You didn't watch the first fight at all? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was back in the dressing room warming up. But uh, I know the fighter, and uh, he's an excellent champion. And uh, he's young. He's a lion. But, you know, hey, veterans always come uh, You You've told us that you wanted to fight meaningful fights. Is he the big I meaningful wanted, fight uh, out there? I'm sure every, all the viewers and all the fans around the world would love to see that fight. So let's make it happen. Yeah. Let's make that the first priority for next year. You know, let's get it on. That's what I'm in. I'm, you know, I've been asking for these guys. These guys are now coming out of the closet. So let's get them on so the fans can see it. For now, you've never ducked anyone. Thank you very much for a scintillating performance once again. Now let me call in Jake. Let me call in Jake Rodriguez. Jake.
Thank you very much. You you went a lot of rounds with him in the gym, but yeah. did you know he punched could punch that hard to the body? Uh, he, he just caught me with a good shot, you know. He caught me with a good shot in the chin, and then I I fell, you know. You know, you know sometimes you don't can't take those punches. So and then when I fell, I would get up, you know. I was okay, shake it off. Right, the second time he caught me again, and then he caught me with a good body punch, and my knee went down. So I, I, I tried to just take the time, but I lost count. I lost count at the referee, and then when I get out, it's too late. So you know. It, I did my best. All right, you have fought now both Felix Trinidad and Pernell Whitaker. Give us your thoughts about what might happen if they meet in the ring. Uh, it's, a, it's a different fight, you know, talking to a big guy.